Welcome to World News. The content of the briefing includes. Ukraine's new drone submarine will finish off Russia's battered Black Sea fleet. A Putin friend in Slovakia could disrupt the EU. Republican donors turn to Nikki Haley as best candidate to beat Trump. Tory MPs criticize Sala Braverman's alarmist speech on migration. Travis King touches back in US after being expelled from North Korea. Ukraine's new drone submarine will finish off Russia's battered Black Sea fleet. Telegraph. Ukraine has revealed plans to develop a drone submarine capable of carrying hundreds of pounds of explosives over a distance of up to 600 miles, posing a significant threat to Russia's Black Sea fleet. The fleet has already suffered significant losses at the hands of Ukrainian forces, and these new drone submarines could further escalate the conflict. The Black Sea fleet is unable to receive reinforcements from the rest of the Russian Navy, as Turkey controls the Bosphorus Strait and has not allowed any warships to pass through since Russia's war on Ukraine began in 2014. A Putin friend in Slovakia could disrupt the EU. Reuters Breaking Views Former Slovak Prime Minister Robert Fico is leading in the polls ahead of Saturday's election. Fico's party, Smer, is polling at 20%, ahead of rival Progressive Slovakia. If Fico returns to power, he could weaken EU unity on Ukraine and oppose sanctions on Russia. As decisions on sanctions must be unanimous, Slovakia could potentially derail the bloc's Ukraine policy. Fico has modeled himself on Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban, who opposes EU financial aid to Ukraine. The weak state of the Slovak economy gives the EU leverage to remind FICO of European solidarity. Republican donors turn to Nikki Haley as best candidate to beat Trump. Telegraph. Republican donors are considering switching their support from Ron DeSantis to Nikki Haley as they search for a candidate who can take on Donald Trump. Impressed by Haley's recent campaigning and performance in the debates, donors are keen to donate to her campaign. Haley is seen as more electable than DeSantis and has gained popularity with her strong general election pitch. However, even if she overtakes DeSantis, she faces the challenge of beating Trump, who is currently leading the Republican field by a wide margin. Tory MPs criticize Sala Braverman's alarmist speech on migration. The Guardian. UK Home Secretary Sala Braverman has been criticized by conservative MPs for suggesting that being gay or a woman and fearing discrimination should not be enough to qualify as a refugee. Braverman made the comments during a speech in Washington, D.C., which was seen as a warning that the government could leave the European Convention on Human Rights if its scheme to remove migrants who arrive by small boat is blocked by the Supreme Court. Conservative MPs Bob Neal and Tobias Elwood expressed concerns about the rhetoric used by Braverman and called for a calmer and more measured approach to immigration debates. The UN High Commissioner for Refugees defended the Refugee Convention, stating that it remains as relevant today as when it was adopted. Travis King touches back in U.S. after being expelled from North Korea. The Independent. U.S. soldier Travis King has returned to the U.S. after being expelled from North Korea, according to a Defense Department official. King, 23, arrived at Joint Base San Antonio Fort Sam Houston on Tuesday, nearly two months after he was taken into North Korean custody for illegally entering the country. King had been detained in a South Korean penal facility before fleeing to North Korea. The U.S. government said it had successfully facilitated his departure from North Korea after months of diplomatic efforts. Oil climbs to $97 a barrel as rally continues. Financial Times. Crude oil prices are on the rise, with Brent crude heading towards $100 a barrel. This has increased fears amongst investors that high oil prices will lead to inflation. Oil prices have risen 35% since June, due to supply cuts by major producers. The rise in oil prices could also lead to higher fuel prices, which in turn could cause inflation to rise. European stocks slipped, with the Stocks Europe 600 index down 0.1%, Germany's DAX down 0.2% and London's FTSE 100 down 0.4%. Touched by their stories, Malaysian minister wants to bring Bali bombing accused home. The Sydney Morning Herald. Malaysia is seeking to repatriate two alleged accomplices to the 2002 Bali bombings who are currently being held at Guantanamo Bay. Mohamed Farak bin Amin and Mohamed Nazir bin Lep, along with Indonesian-born Hambali, were charged as accessories to the nightclub bombings in Bali and a hotel explosion in 2003. The Malaysian government is attempting to bring its two citizens home, as they have yet to be brought to trial before a U.S. military commission. Hambali, on the other hand, is unlikely to be repatriated to Indonesia due to concerns that he could still inspire extremists. Vietnam jails environmental activist for three years for tax fraud. ABC. Vietnamese environmental activist Hong Thi Minh Hong has been sentenced to three years in prison on charges of tax fraud. 
Hong, the director of an environmental advocacy group, was convicted of tax evasion after a trial in Ho Chi Minh City. She was accused of dodging tax payments worth $6.7 billion, $430,745, between 2012 and 2022. Hong was also fined $100 million. Human rights organizations have criticized U.S. President Joe Biden for failing to address human rights issues during his recent state visit to Vietnam. How long does it take to paint a plane? The innocuous question to Qantas bosses that kicked off a grilling. ABC. The Australian Senate Committee investigating the government's rejection of Qatar Airways' bid to send more planes to Australia's east coast has turned into a platform for grievances against Qantas. Coalition frontbencher Bridget McKenzie accused the airline of supporting the Yes campaign in the same-sex marriage referendum in return for the government's rejection of the Qatar Airways bid. McKenzie threatened to issue a summons to former Qantas CEO Alan Joyce, who is currently overseas, to appear when he returns and could be found in contempt of the Senate if he fails to do so. As thaw accelerates, Swiss glaciers have lost 10% of their volume in the past two years, experts say. The Toronto Star Glacier melt in Switzerland has accelerated, with the country losing 10% of its ice volume in just two years, according to a report from a Swiss Academy of Sciences panel. The country has witnessed a 4% decline in glacier volume this year, following a 6% drop in 2022, the biggest since measurements began. Matthias Huss, head of the Glamos Glacier Monitoring Center, said Switzerland has already lost up to 1,000 small glaciers and larger ones are also now disappearing. He added that glaciers were the ambassadors of climate change and there was a big urgency to act now. India welcomes Pakistan cricketers for first visit in seven years. The Independent. The Pakistan cricket team has arrived in India for the ICC Men's Cricket World Cup, marking the first visit to India in seven years for the Pakistani side. The arrival was met with cheers and a warm welcome from fans and Indian colleagues. The match between India and Pakistan is scheduled to take place on October 14 at the Narendra Modi Stadium in Ahmedabad and is expected to be one of the most watched matches of the tournament due to the historic rivalry between the two teams. Roger Waters accused of using anti-Semitic slurs by Pink Floyd producer. The Independent. A new documentary, The Dark Side of Roger Waters, has claimed that the Pink Floyd founder and former bassist used anti-Semitic slurs in a song. The film, produced by the Campaign Against Antisemitism, CAA, alleges that Waters referred to his agent as a fucking Jew in a song about Brian Morrison. The documentary also claims that Waters referred to a dish he was served in a Lebanese restaurant as Jew food and impersonated a Polish peasant woman in a conversation with a musician from a Polish Jewish background. Emails from 2010 relating to Waters' tour suggested that he had considered having anti Semitic slurs written on a giant inflatable pig used during his concerts. Waters, 80, has previously been criticized for his comments about Israel. Waters did not respond to requests for comment from the producers of the documentary. Lone Runner competes in 100M after anti-doping bust in India. Telegraph. An athletics competition in India was marred by doping fears, with only one sprinter competing in the 100-meter final. Several athletes withdrew from the event amid fears of being asked to provide samples for testing. The National Anti-Doping Agency, NADA, arrived to conduct tests at the event after a video appeared on social media showing a littered washroom with syringes and packets of the banned drug erythropoietin, EPO. Indian sport has suffered a number of doping scandals this year, with 45 athletes suspended. India ranks second only to Russia in the number of doping violations, according to the World Anti-Doping Agency. Pictured, Taiwan unveils its first homemade submarine. Telegraph. Taiwan has unveiled its first domestically made submarine, named Narwhal, in a bid to boost its deterrence capabilities against possible Chinese aggression. The 1.27 billion pounds diesel-electric powered submarine was built with the help of expertise and technology from multiple countries, marking a breakthrough for the diplomatically isolated nation. Taiwan aims to build a total of eight indigenous submarines, with the fleet intended to complicate China's invasion calculation and protect Taiwanese territory against a naval blockade. The strategically located submarines would also hinder the Chinese Navy's projection into the wider Pacific region. Country records record high number of shooting deaths in September. The Guardian. September 2021 has become the deadliest month for shooting deaths in Sweden since records began in 2016, with 11 people killed in shootings and bomb blasts. The surge in violence is believed to be linked to a split within the Foxtrot gang. In the most recent incidents, an 18-year-old man was killed at a sports ground in a Stockholm suburb, another man was shot dead in Jordbro, 
and a woman died from injuries sustained in a bomb blast in Storvreta. Three people have been detained in relation to the Jordbro shooting, and two have been arrested over the Uppsala explosion. Sweden has been grappling with gang-related violence for several years, with conflicts over arms and drug trafficking resulting in frequent shootings and the use of explosives. That's all for today's news from the Six Degrees. I'm Dr. Six, your trusty observer of the world's happenings. Let's recap what we've learned. Ukraine has plans to develop a drone submarine that could threaten Russia's Black Sea Fleet. Former Slovak Prime Minister Robert Fico could disrupt EU unity on Ukraine if he returns to power. Republican donors are considering supporting Nikki Haley as a potential candidate to challenge Donald Trump. UK Home Secretary Sala Braverman has faced criticism from Conservative MPs for her speech on migration. US soldier Travis King has returned to the US after being expelled from North Korea. Crude oil prices are on the rise, which could lead to increased inflation. Malaysia is seeking to repatriate two alleged accomplices to the 2002 Bali bombings. Vietnamese environmental activist Hong Thi Minh Hong has been sentenced to three years in prison for tax fraud. The Australian Senate committee investigating Qatar Airways bid has turned into a platform for grievances against Qantas. Glacier melt in Switzerland has accelerated, with the country losing 10% of its ice volume in two years. The Pakistan cricket team has arrived in India for the ICC Men's Cricket World Cup. A new documentary claims that Pink Floyd founder Roger Waters used anti-Semitic slurs. An athletics competition in India was affected by doping fears. Taiwan has unveiled its first domestically made submarine to boost its deterrence capabilities. September 2021 has become the deadliest month for shooting deaths in Sweden. Now, let's dive deeper into some of these stories. Firstly, the development of a drone submarine by Ukraine poses a significant threat to Russia's Black Sea Fleet. The fleet has already suffered losses at the hands of Ukrainian forces, and these new submarines could further escalate the conflict. It's a classic case of technology advancing warfare. Secondly, the possibility of Robert Fico returning to power in Slovakia could disrupt EU unity on Ukraine. Fico has shown a similar stance to Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban, opposing EU financial aid to Ukraine. This raises concerns about the bloc's ability to maintain a united front in its Ukraine policy. Next, Republican donors are considering switching their support from Ron DeSantis to Nikki Haley as they search for a candidate who can challenge Donald Trump. Haley has gained popularity with her strong general election pitch, but she still faces the challenge of beating Trump, who currently leads the Republican field by a wide margin. It's a tough race, but anything can happen in politics. Moving on, UK Home Secretary Sala Braverman's speech on migration has faced criticism from Conservative MPs. The MPs expressed concerns about the rhetoric used by Braverman and called for a calmer approach to immigration debates. It's a reminder that the language we use in political discourse can have a significant impact on public opinion. In other news, US soldier Travis King has returned to the US after being expelled from North Korea. King's return follows months of diplomatic efforts by the US government. It's a reminder of the complexities of international relations and the importance of diplomacy in resolving conflicts. Lastly, the acceleration of glacier melt in Switzerland is a stark reminder of the urgent need to address climate change. Glaciers are the ambassadors of climate change, and their disappearance has far-reaching consequences. It's a call to action for individuals, governments, and organizations to take steps to mitigate climate change and protect our planet. That's all for today's news analysis. I hope you've enjoyed our journey through the latest headlines. Now, it's your turn. What are your thoughts on these stories? Do you have any questions or comments? I'd love to hear from you. Remember, in the six degrees, no topic is off limits. So, share your thoughts and let's keep the conversation going. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief by email.